Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Brendan Mushi. Uh, I got a Zato guide for you guys since on my video of me playing Zato, a couple of you guys asked for a Zato guide and some tips on how to play him. So uh, I just want to preface that I do understand that this is a beta and a lot of things might be subject to change, but I feel like most of the stuff in the beta is going to be pretty much the same as when the game actually launches, uh, especially things that deal with fundamentally how he plays and stuff like that. So uh, Zato is my favorite Guilty Gear character, the coolest character in Guilty Gear, and I've started playing him in Exerd. I also want to preface this guide by letting you know if you're completely new to Guilty Gear and you don't know terminology like the number pad directions, like if I say 2H, or you don't know what Oki means or pressure means or something like that, I'll put some resource links in the description for you to check that stuff out. So that way you can uh, you can translate all this FGC lingo that the uh, hip kids are using. Alright, so what type of character is Zato? Why should you play him? What can he do? So Zato is a very difficult to play, challenging to use, technical puppet character. He's referred to as a puppet character because they often refer to his shadow that he controls as his puppet. Uh, they can be kind of confusing because it's like you're controlling two characters at once, right? So they're able to attack independently of each other. And so you can do things where like Zato attacks on the ground while Eddie attacks in the air, or Eddie attacks on the ground while Zato attacks in the air, or they sandwich you between each other. Eddie is able to be used to lock down the opponent while Zato is able to go for mix-ups. So Zato can go for overheads, he can go for lows, he can go for grabs, he even has side switch mix-ups. So he's got, with Eddie, he's got some pretty good space control, right? So it seems really strong, right? I mean, he's got good space control, he's got good mix-ups, it's like you're fighting two characters, but he's not without his weaknesses. So Zato has, I believe, the third lowest health in the game. Uh, he's basically made of paper, so if you get hit, you will get destroyed. He also has no reversal, even with meter. Uh, Amorphous Super, this used to be a reversal super. It is no longer a reversal super anymore, so he doesn't even have a metered reversal at all. So you're going to have to rely on burst and things like uh, dead angle in order to get yourself out of pressure situations. He also suffers from bad uh, normals. So a lot of his normals, if you try to poke with them, uh, you will lose most of the time because um, basically the way that his pokes are designed is that he basically leads with his face first. It looks like he's like, boy, like he's roasting you. Uh, like, boy, if you don't. Um, so, but anyway, um, when he does this 2S, uh, if it basically extends the hurt box first, so you have to be careful. His 2H as well, you have to make sure that you're very quick with it. If they jump at you and you're too late, you will get stuffed out of it or it'll trade. So you have to be early. You gotta be, mmm, you gotta be early. Same with his like 2S, right? If you're late on his uh, 2S poke, you're gonna get counter hit or you're gonna trade. So you gotta be, mmm, you gotta be early. And you should also play Zato if you just want to play the coolest character in Guilty Gear or if you like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So if you notice in the lower left hand corner there's a bar above his tension gauge, that is the Eddie gauge, and that gauge determines how long Eddie is able to stay in play. It depletes over time, and it also depletes by a specific value based on the commands that you input Eddie to do. The amount it depletes by depends on the command, uh, so he has four commands you can command him to do, and each correspond to a button, attack button of Zato. So you have the punch command, you have the kick command, you have the slash command, and you have the heavy slash command. So those are all the commands that you can command uh, Eddie to do. Uh, 214 heavy slash summons him, 214 heavy slash unsummons him. If you unsummon him, you will get Eddie back a lot quicker because if Eddie ends up getting hit, he dies and it becomes red and it takes a long time for him to come back. This also can occur if you spam Eddie moves too much and Eddie dies this way, he'll also uh, unsummon. Same thing happens if Zato is hit, he'll die. However, if Zato blocks, he will be. He will act as if uh, he were he were unsummoned, which is a lot better for you. So uh, managing the Eddie gauge can be key because during the times when Eddie is gone, uh, Zato is considerably a weaker character because he Zato doesn't really get a whole lot off of his moves. And this brings me to the first part of talking about Zato's moves. Uh, talking about Zato himself outside of the shadow. So outside of the shadow, he's got Invite Hell, which is a good poke tool. You can see that with meter. You can see that without meter and without Eddie, he doesn't really get a whole lot off of this, but if he has Eddie out... He's able to get a ton of damage. So, Zato is able to convert off of things he normally wouldn't be able to with the Shadow. So again, this is just to further emphasize the uh, importance of utilizing the Shadow. But again, uh, he has a Invite Hell Drill, which serves as a poke tool. He has a Command Grab. 
uh, which doesn't really give him very much frame advantage at all. I'm not exactly sure what the frame data is on this, but it's got to be like either zero or minus one or plus one. It's, it's pretty close to zero, so you don't really get a whole lot of pressure off of this command grab. Outside of those uh, tools, the rest of the things in Zato's kit essentially just serve as mobility and utility tools, right? So he's got Drunkard Shade, which allows him to reflect projectiles. And uh, fun fact, he can also uh, <laughs> reflect Ram's explosion on her sword, which is pretty funny. You can block the sword and you can reflect the explosion and it just shoots it. They basically gave Zato a gun uh, when he does that, which he absolutely needed. And then uh, he has a flight. So most characters, they have an air dash when they're in the air. When Zato air dashes, um, he automatically goes into a flight mode after his air dash. He can basically air dash in all of uh, six directions, because if you air dash up, he just floats in place and drifts up. If you air dash down, he floats in place and drifts down. Up back, he actually dashes up back. Back, he dashes back. Down back, down forward, forward, up forward. And so he's able to dash in multiple directions, and just like any other character, he's able to do jump-ins, dash, jump-in for double overheads, which allows for some uh, good mix-ups. And that is something that Zato is heavily known for, is having really strong mix-ups, especially when, when Eddie's locking them down, and then you're able to go for mix-ups while Eddie's holding them in place. So really good stuff there. And so, yeah, so the flight is really good for uh, mobility and maneuvering around the stage. Um, it, it is kind of unfortunate that the air dash feels kind of slow and clunky, so it is something you kind of have to get used to. Zato's mobility in this game really isn't that great, but um, it, it does have some uses, right? Being able to just fly and annoy people who don't have good air mobility, like a Leo or something's trying to chase you down and you're just jump caning them, and you're just like, no, you're like, back, back, I say, get off me, right? Um, and just being able to throw out like this jump heavy or jump dust right and a lot of times you're able to just like smack people out of the air when they're trying to chase you down and this can be good for when you're stalling for time when say like eddie is uh is dead or something right and you're like trying to stall for time you're like flying around and stuff like that you can use break the law as well which uh, two and four k and this will make you leave the game just be careful because he's extremely punishable when he uh when he leaves so you'll get counter hit so you got to be careful but if you have meter you can roam and cancel to make this save so, for example, if somebody was trying to go in on you, you could do something like this, right? Roman cancel and then grab them. If you don't know how to do that, by the way, uh, Roman cancel in this game is performed by hitting uh, any three attack buttons um, and that you're able to cancel out of your moves. But uh, normally Roman cancel just does this, but uh, you actually can cancel your Roman, your, you can cancel your Roman cancel into special moves, right? So this is a normal Roman cancel. And this is a Roman cancel cancel into a special. He also has a Morphous Super, which has nothing to do with Eddie. This is completely independent of Eddie. It's mostly going to be used for combo filler. It does track, but people can just block it or maneuver around it pretty quickly. I don't know if people will discover some more tech to make it more useful, but in my experience, it's just used the end combos to tack on more damage. Uh, we'll get into his other Super Sun Void uh, a little bit later on. As far as his normals go, so he's got 5P and 2P. They really don't lead into much. Um, they're just used to like get people off of you because they're your fastest buttons. His jump P is godlike because it's really fast and it's extremely active. It does like three hits. So when people are like jumping at you, you can like swap people out of the air with it. Jump K is really, is essentially the same use except for a different angle when people are like below you. So if someone's like trying to chase after you, you can just swat them down away from you. Uh, jump Slash crosses up. So you can use it for like cross ups and stuff for like mix ups, right? Jump Heavy Slash has a really uh, really good hitbox on it too, very similar to Jump P. It's a bit slower, but it's really chunky hip, chunkier, more active hitbox. Um, jump Dust can be a good air-to-air -air as well in my experience. I haven't really experimented with it too much to see like what it loses to, but sometimes when you're uh, in an air-to-air -air situation because of the horizontal space it covers, like you can catch people, right? And then uh, probably convert off of it as well. Yeah, you can use it for side switch mix-ups as well. Um, his far slash and two slash are going to be your main go-to pokes. Again, just remember that Zato's pokes will lose to people a lot, so you just have to be careful of that. 5H is basically just combo filler, so basically you'll use it to end combos like close slash, far slash, heavy slash, drill, right? Or, you know, slash, heavy slash, drill, right? That's essentially what you're going to do. Use that for 2H uh, is really go-to anti-air along with 6P. 6P, 2H, jump P, jump K, like your jump, basically your jump normal, 6P and 2H, and... The Eddie Leap are going to be your go-to anti-airs to get people out of the air. Uh, like I said, just be careful because um, the 2H can get stuffed if you're late, so you do have to make sure you're pretty fast with it. 6P has upper body and vulnerability. 
you can 6P, but he doesn't really get too much off of 6P if, if he doesn't have meter or Eddie isn't already out. Um, whereas he gets a lot off of his 2H. Six K is an overhead. Um, it is a little bit slow, but it can catch people. He can't really combo off of it without meter. But if you have uh, Eddie, you can get full combos. Six H. Uh, it's not an overhead, but um, it is airborne, so you can use it to like crush people who are like gonna throw because you'll you'll be airborne and you'll counter hit them. Um, and then also he can cancel it into his air dash. So you do 6H and then air dash, and then you can go for a high, or you can go for a low. Um, so that could be kind of tricky, but I'm not sure if you can like fuzzy it. Um, like if they can just block high and then wait until you go low, I'm not really sure. Right, something like that. Oh, and it should also be noted that if you Drunkard Shade Eddie, it actually moves him towards the opponent, which is really strong. And it'll actually uh, cancel whatever Eddie's doing. So if Eddie's doing the K, you're just like, nope. Or if Eddie's doing the H move, you're just like, nope. It just cancels him out of whatever he's doing. And it sends him forward, except for the leap, because he's already airborne. But if you can manage to catch him before he actually leaves, it'll do it. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but... <laughs> but you can. Uh, so this is, really, this is really, really good, because you're able to actually move uh, Eddie... Um, in on the opponent a lot faster, right? Um, like if somebody, like say this Ramathal is like trying to throw a poke out to kill Eddie, right? Like say that, say something like that happens, you can reflect Eddie in. Like you can do tight shit. Like you can reflect Eddie in and then actually have Eddie combo off it. Like that's kind of sick. You can even like do Eddie's H, drunk, and then have him block stuff, right? So like say you have Eddie out, block it, send him in. Make him do another attack, and then you still have like more attacks you can do, right? So a lot of creativity, uh, a lot of potential with this character. So um, you summon Eddie with 214H. That will summon him. When you walk forward, Eddie moves forward. When you walk back, Eddie moves back. If you want to move Eddie without moving Zato, you can hold down back or down forward, and this will move Eddie without moving Zato because Zato's still crouching, right? Um, Eddie cannot jump, but if you hold up forward, he'll obviously still be holding forward, right? Um, so, uh, obviously with fighting games, when you press a button, your character attacks. Now, Eddie is unique in that when you press an attack button, uh, Eddie will attack when the button is released, Zato will attack when the button is pressed. Let me run that back. Let me run that back for the Leo players that are watching. So, if you do uh, 214H, you press punch and you hold the button down, right? I'm pressing punch and I'm holding it. When I release this punch button, Eddie's going to do the P button. Boom. Same thing if I if I hold K and then I release it, boom, right? And so the cool thing is is that um, you can hold buttons during the summon animation, right? So while I'm doing this animation, Zato is unable to move. And because he's unable to move, I can press whatever button I want Eddie to be able to do and I have to hold it while I'm playing and then release it when I want him to do it, right? So like, say you wanted to, you wanted to stock uh, this move, right? So you summon Eddie with 2 and 4H, press S and hold it, and then if they jump at you, you just release it, right? And so uh, you have to do strings with Zato uh, by holding buttons down. If you don't want, if you want to attack with, if you have both of them out and you want to attack with Zato, but you don't want Eddie to attack, you're going to have to hold the buttons you're pressing with Zato. And then when you want Eddie to attack, you're going to have to release the button that you want him to use. Or if you're not holding the button you want him to use, just keep holding the ones you've already used and tap the new button so that uh, he'll do it, right? So for example, let's say I wanted to do uh, 2S drill and I wanted uh, Eddie to leap after that. So what you would do is you would do, you'd have Eddie out, you do 2S hold, H hold, and now I'm holding S and H, as you can see up in the up top left, and then I'm releasing S but still holding H. Because whichever one I release, that's the one he's going to do. So 2S, Eddie didn't do anything. Canceling the drill, Eddie didn't do anything because I'm holding. And then whatever I release. And if I wanted him to do K, I would just tap K, but I'm still holding S and H. You can see in the upper left what I'm doing, right? So it would look like this. All right, 2S in the drill doesn't combo, but um, that's you get the idea. The co this concept is referred to as negative edging. Um, that's what it's called. And so, again, it's when... It's when moves come out when you release the button. And this is very crucial to playing Zato and Eddie. And if you're like, damn, that sounds really complex, dude. I can't do that. 
uh, yeah, I mean, most people can't. That's kind of the point, is it's a challenge. It's like learning to play an instrument or learning to play piano or le learning to throw a fireball. There probably was a point where you couldn't throw a fireball, but now you can. It's just like that. It's weird at first, but you get used to it, and it just takes practice, so. Going over uh, Eddie's, Eddie's actual moves and what they do. So uh, Eddie has a P. This move has great range and is the least expensive Eddie move. You can cast it three times without um, Eddie disappearing. Also important to know, no matter how little Eddie gauge you have left, you can use any move you want. So like for example, I have a pinch of Eddie gauge left and I use leap, even though leap takes like half the bar and you can only do two leaps. So keep in mind that um, you know the punch you can do three times, but you could do two punches and then like a leap, right? Um, as long as Ramblethlo doesn't smack him away. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So the punch is a really good uh, poke tool. You can do like 2S and then into punch. And then like now you guys are in. Um, just be careful though because uh, the the this, this move right here has a gap in between the two hits. So you'll notice that it doesn't actually show two hits on the combo counter, right? Like how this shows two hits. This doesn't because um, it's not actually a true combo. Unless they're... Uh, in the air if they're airborne it actually um it actually does juggle airborne right so if they're in the air you see i'm getting three hits and this is really crucial for his air combos which uh his air juggles so the p is really really strong if you 2h someone um you can 2h summon stock a p depending on how high they are and then you release it and then you can dash up and keep comboing right K is really good for locking them down. It's really expensive. It costs like almost half the bar. Um, but this one will lock them down for a really long period of time so that you can go for high, low. They're locked down for a while and you can go for overhead, low. Once it's done, you can be like psych and then go for a throw, right? Um, you can go for 5D. Uh, the S is, this thing is, you'll see it a lot because this move, um, it covers a pretty decent it's not perfect, right? It has its weaknesses. Um, it looks a lot stronger than it actually is. The angle it covers is kind of weird because um, it it can go over people, especially when they're um, crouching. When they're crouching, it like basically can't hit them, like unless they like like even if you're like right on top of them, like this happens all the time. Um, it has to like land on them, right? If they're standing, it's a bit different. Um, right because he's actually able to clip her face right but most people crouch tend to crouch block so you're still able to like run in and do stuff but for combos this shit is crazy like you can get ridiculous damage just looping into this right like ridiculous damage all i did was two heavy two h four circle forward slash it and then you do like two hits of zato and you just keep looping into that and it does ridiculous damage so you'll see this a lot for Zato's uh, combos. You'll see these like leap loops, right? Um, and it, it can catch people out of the air. There is a weird dead zone. Yeah, look at that. There's like a weird dead zone in it a lot of times that you have to be careful about. Like sometimes people would just, it's hard to find it, but there's some like dead zones in it that people can uh, get through. So you just have to be really mindful of that. Uh, but it can be, it can be really good. Um, he has uh, H1, which is a pose. A pose is really strong, and this is really, really anti unga because while this move is out, um, while this move is out, it'll block all the opponent's attacks. So if someone, if someone like jumps in on you, for example, you can oppose, and you get like mad damage off of it. So if you oppose, it's a lot easier to anti air people without worrying about getting stuffed. And you're able to like freely run in for throws, so like you can knock someone down, oppose, and if they mash on you like she just did, you get you can grab them. And what's also fucked up, if you do his normal grab, uh, you can actually get a full combo. So you could do this, she mashed, oh you thought, and you get like a combo off of your normal throw without spending meters. So that can be really cool too. Um, and that is something you can do. So, uh, pretty good stuff there. Um, so yeah, pose is really strong. Um, just be careful because people can still cancel as if you're as if their moves are being blocked. So like Ram could like jump cancel and block, right? So like if someone j hits you, they can still jump cancel it, right? Or they can cancel into supers and stuff too. Like I've, they can also um, if they have a command grab, they can cancel into their command grab and grab Zato because he is still able to be thrown. So like people can do some like 
galaxy brain shit where like they hit you and then they if you're soul you could cancel this into soul's command grab which normally wouldn't work but because you're hitting eddie not zato zato himself is not in hit stun or block stun and so you just cancel into a command grab and grab him so uh there are some counter there is some counterplay to it also new to strive that he didn't have before which is really cool is that um zato is able to actually cancel uh eddie moves into each other so for example you could do eddie p cancel it into eddie k cancel it into eddie s and uh, you'll notice that zato does a uh, clap animation um so basically uh as a balancing tool it forces zato to basically clap and be unable to move so you're basically instead of zato being able to move while you know, while this P is active, Zato can move freely, you can sacrifice Zato's movement and make Eddie just do more shit, right? Which is really cool and can be very, very useful. So like, for example, I was explaining before, uh, Eddie can actually be hit in between these two. There's a gap. There. Normally the way these characters function is you, you want to be able to protect Eddie. So you can fill that gap yourself as Zato by doing stuff like, like this, right? Um, but also, if you if Zato isn't close enough, you can you can do stuff like P, and then they mash and hit you, right? But you can cancel it with the clap into like a pose, and you'll actually block the attack, right? So that's pretty cool. And then you could drill as like as Zato, right? And do some do some hot shit like that. Um, you could even if they uh, have a habit of jumping, so you can do like and then clap, and now you're in, right? So, um, yeah, the clap has really good um, application. I think a really strong thing to do, because something Zato didn't have before, is he couldn't um, summon into Eddie, right? See how they can, like, jump out if I do P into Eddie, or I do K into Eddie, right? I think Slash into Eddie uh, he could, is a true block stream, yeah. So they can't. So the heavier button you use, the less they're able to actually, like, mash out of it or jump out of it. Um, so, like, for example, if I do Heavy Slash into Eddie, um, they'll get counter hit if they mash and they cannot jump out of this. So say you do like heavy slash into summon, right? Because this is guaranteed, right? Boom. That's guaranteed, right? So after that hits, you could do a pose. You know, something like that. Um, if they're jumping out, you could do leap instead. So if they're jumping out, like, because again, this is guaranteed. Right? So if they're just like completely respecting this, then you can like actually run in and you know do your do what you want to do on them. If you think they're gonna uh, like jump or something, uh, and you have Eddie out, you can just leap at them. You'll get a full combo because uh, the leap basically has two hits. It has a hit uh, going up and then it has a hit going down. If the hit going down hits them, it'll splat them into the ground, and you can actually OTG, you can pick them up with 2S into 2H for a full combo. And then move Eddie forward and do it again, and you can like just loop that for a lot of damage. Um, so, and if they block, right? So if they, if they block Eddie, well then you're just in, right? You can actually go for a mix up on them. So uh, getting them to block Eddie, whether that's his P, um, just be mindful of the gap, right? Remember about the gap. Are they respecting it? Okay, cool, I'm in. Um, are they jumping out? All right, leap on them. Are they mashing? Oppose them, right? Um, are they going in on you? Pose on yourself and then punish them for it, right? Are they jumping? Out? Are they jumping in neutral? Leap on them, then run in. If they block Eddie, then you're in, and you can actually start doing uh, your mix. That's when you can use K to lock them down. You can go for block strings and mix-ups. So, um, yeah. So essentially, uh, a lot of the strategy for playing Zato in neutral is just having Eddie out and pushing Eddie forward and seeing seeing what they do, right? If they try and poke at Eddie, you can throw out a drill, right? Let's so say they're like. Say they're like really trying to kill Eddie, right? Because a lot of people will try and do that. They'll poke at him, right? You're just like, you just play footsies with him and then you punish them, right? So you, the drill is used to protect Eddie. So you, you throw out a drill and the drill hits them and now Eddie's in. And now you can run in and do your thing, right? But what if they, what if they expect the drill and they go they go over it and they punish you right well that's where uh, eddie comes in 
and then you just <laughs> so then uh, while while Zato's doing this drill, you just do Eddie's leap, and uh, and that's what makes them really strong is they're able to protect and cover each other. You can use the drill to protect uh, Eddie. You can use stuff like a pose using your two H. using your 6P, right? And so uh, utilizing those to really like prevent people from bullying you uh, in the air so that you can finally get Eddie on them and then get started, right? So it's also really strong is his Sun Void Super. So it's half circle back forward slash. That's a true block string. Um, she hit the gap in between, remember there's a gap there. And then you can go into your pose thing right the sun void super can be used to get a knockdown so basically uh it'll it'll summon wherever eddie is if he's in play and then it will target where the opponent is and they can jump away from it right um also keep in mind when you do leap as eddie it can be hit but um what you can do so then what you want to do is you want to run in and, and punish them with like two s as zato right so again, it's about, you know, protecting each other, right? So if he's going up high like this, you know, you can hit him low, right? Not literally low, but like, you can, you get what I'm saying. Um, so that's kind of like your strategy in neutral, and it can be really, really annoying for the opponent to deal with you. Um, the Sun Void Super can also be used to end combos, because like I said, if you look at how much the Eddie Gage has, Eddie's dead, I can use Sun Void, brings him back in, and he's plus. Stupid as hell. Really fucking stupid. When it comes to playing Zato in this game, uh, just realize that an important part of playing Zato more so than like the mix-ups and stuff like that is really being good at defense. Like, you have to be very, very good at defense in order to play Zato. Uh, you have to be able to survive under pressure without a reversal and having low health. You have to be able to dance around in neutral with the flight. And, and people are going to come at you with these giant pokes and these like ridiculous jump-ins. And so it's really, really important that you lab how to beat stuff. Like for example, Ramlethal, this thing is really hard to anti air Zato. it just is and so you have to be able to play around that stuff like maybe dash under her right uh maybe break the law right and then rc it so you have to be you have to learn how to be evasive right you have to learn like creative ways to really dance around the screen because you're not kai you can't just dp her or your 2H isn't ridiculously privileged, your slashes aren't these crazy sword normals, right? Um, most of your normals will get stuffed by other people, you have no reversal, you have low health, and so you have to compensate for that by having godlike neutral. Um, otherwise, you're not gonna get a chance to get started to really do that stuff where you get to do mixes and stuff like that. Some notable players I recommend that you watch are Marlon Pie, Mr. Crimson, Beautiful Dude, Peppery Splash, Ogawa. Um, I'm sure there's some people that are missing. These are just uh, Zato players off the top of my head. Um, but you can check, most of those players are, are streaming on Twitch, or you can go to their Twitter or check out that hashtag and you can find a lot of tech and a lot of info. Uh, also, character discords are really helpful too, so you might want to look around for those as well. I'll put some links in the uh, description for anyone who's interested in finding other resources for learning the character. Alright guys, so well, if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. I think this about wraps it up for the basics of Zato, so that way you know his moves, you know his playstyle, you know mechanically what you are supposed to be doing with your hands with him, and you have some ideas ideas as far as what you can do. I'm going to be uploading a second video which I should have on the cards now and that video is going to go more into combos, mix-ups and things like that that you can more practically copy. Uh, again, what you can do is you can go on Twitter and you can type in hashtag GGST underscore ZA and this will show you all of the tech posted by other Zato players. If you guys have any further questions let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like these let me know. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notification so you get notified whenever I make new videos. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.